Hello there, welcome to this video on mastering 251s. This video is only going to be focusing on 251s in all 12 keys, and I'm only going to be dealing with the major or minor triads. I'm uh, going to play all the 251s in all the 12 keys, and uh, you're going to master them. This is quite philosophical. Knowing the 251s uh, as if you're just typing, as if you're writing the alphabet, if I say the letter M, you automatically know that N comes next, and then O comes next. There's three. You can put things in groups of three. This is, uh, let's invent a word, a trigression, not a transgression, a trigression, a progression of three chords. But you're not going to remember them as three chords. You're going to remember them as one group. And almost all music, f f you know, from, from hundreds of years in the past, are uh, based on two five ones, often. Now you can enter a 2-5-1 from a 6 often, so you can do this if you want to take it to the next level. You can do all this by putting a 6 in front, and you can enhance the chords by adding the relevant 7, major 7 or dominant 7. But the focus here for beginners is simply the major or minor triad and the 2-5-1, and we're going to go through all 12 keys. Now for this to be possible, you must know your major scales. So before I do each one and before you do each one, we're just going to go up and down the major scale. That's it. So, uh, pen and paper ready. Uh, all the related videos are in the description box below. Modal theory, uh, naming chords, a couple of chord progression videos. And each 2 5 one that I do, uh, there's two things about each one. First, I'm just going to play it, but I'm going to play it in a particular way. So each one is going to sound different. So I'm going to give you some kind of technique, some kind of technical exercise to apply, which you can then apply to other chord progressions as well, of course. And second, I'm going to play it first normally, 2-5-1, major or minor triads. And then I'm going to enhance it to how it can sound with a very complex chord. You can ask questions about what I play if you put a time stamp or tell me the key that I did something in that you liked, and I'll explain it. Uh, but I'll just do that as uh, a demonstration of what is possible simply by knowing 2-5-1, and that's it. Um, so it's going to be a normal playing and then a complex version of it. In all 12 keys, major scale coming first, then the 2-5-1. Uh, learn them as, as a, a trio. It's a, it's a trigression, so, tr so that's what I want you to get into your bones. If I say C, you're just going to know instantly it's D and G. That's the 2 and the 5, and then C is the 1. If I say B flat, you're instantly going to know it's C and F, because they feel like they should be together. If I say uh, A flat, you're going to know it's B flat and E flat instantly because they, they are paired together in, in groups of three. And that's the point I want you to get to because that's how you can learn all this jazz repertoire, which is based 80 plus percent on two five ones. At the end of the video, if I remember, and I hope I do, if I don't, I'll um, write it in the description. Um, there's a, a really good song which I've been discussing recently with a few people called A Foggy Day classic jazz song. I actually have a recording of me playing it, but it's many, many years old. And that is probably one of the best songs to demonstrate how to uh, apply this logic, this, this not logic, this uh, philosophy of 251s and 6251s and one or two other things. So at the end, I'm going to teach you that song, but not the melody, that comes last. I'm going to teach it to you in numbers. I'm just going to give you the progression in blocks that you should have mastered already, 251 being the most important, six, followed by 6251, followed by moving up a fourth. And you're going to know that song just by the numbers. So let's, that's going to be a bit of a test at the end, a bit of homework for you. So I'll do my absolute best to remember that. So uh, as always, like, comment, subscriptions are welcome. Have a look at my books, blog and podcast. And in the description box below are all the related videos that you need uh, to understand this video or to take it even further. So, start with the key of C. I'll go around uh, chromatically, I think that's easiest. So just chromatically. So C, I want you to put into your mind D, G, C. So major scale first. You know the major scale. You can see it, you're orientated in the key of C. It just happens to be the white notes on the piano, that's irrelevant. If this was a guitar lesson, you wouldn't be able to say C is just the white notes, because it would be a shape just as any other scale. Um, so C, so it's D, G, C, they go together, make it a mantra, D, G, C. So triads only, major minor first, D minor, G major, 
C major. So that's the pattern, minor, minor, major, two, five, one, minor, major, major, minor, major, major, minor, major, major. That's how it is, if you want to know why, I have a modal theory video on that below. Everything's below that you need, or ask a question. Minor, major, major, two, five, one, key of C, D, G, C. So when you, so let's just do this one very simply that with the different ways I'm gonna play the triad, triads. This one will just simply be block chords with each hand. Two, five, same time, each hand, very simple. And you might want to move that around with a bit of a rhythm maybe. Just to give it a bit more fun. But the point is that you're orientated in C and the D, G are the two and the five and it feels right, DGC, DGC, DGC. You're in the key of C, you can visualize the key of C. It becomes a mantra. Now you could enhance that to be something like. So that was a complicated way of playing a two, five, one, but it was still based on D, G, C, two, five, one. Moving up to C sharp. Now instantly or D flat, instantly there's the D sharp or E flat. Let's, let's call it the sharp, C sharp, so we've got D sharp is number two, G sharp is five, C sharp is one. So minor, major, major, D sharp, minor, G sharp, major, uh, sorry, G sharp, major, I said, G sharp, major, and then C sharp, major, minor, major, major, D sharp, G sharp, C sharp, or E flat, A flat, D flat. So let's play that. Let's play that in uh, maybe with arpeggios, very simple arpeggios, uh, one hand each. Just just the triad, no, no sevens, unless you want to. That's the two, five, one. And then maybe with the right hand. Now I'm not memorizing the um, chords individually. It's a trigression, remember. So when I say C sharp or D flat, instantly you can visualize and know as a, as a trio, as a trio, it's this note, this note, this note, D sharp, G sharp, C sharp. They go together, they fit together. Orientate yourself in that key. I forgot to play the scale, sorry. Orientate yourself in that C sharp major scale or the D flat. So you're orientated in it. You can see it everywhere at the piano. It doesn't matter where you are, you just see it everywhere. And then you can see the two minor, five major, one major, minor, major, major. Uh, so we did that one as individual arpeggios. Moving on to D. Uh, D instantly is E, A, and D. It feels right, E, A, D, they feel right. It's a mantra, say it, maybe do one a day, and then in 12 days you know them. E, A, D, E, A, D, two, five, one, E, A, D, they f it feels right. It, I would never play a B before the D, it's impossible, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. E, A, D. B is the two of E, sorry, <laughs> B is the two of A. So I was gonna say E because I'm going to E next to five. If I, if, I, if I know that B is a two, it goes in the trio of A and E because E is the five of A. You see, it's two, five, one of A, B. So I'd never play B with the D. It's the six, but it's not the two. So we're in the D now. Let's play the scale. Orientate yourself in that key. See it everywhere. Two, five, one, E, A, D, it feels right. This time, what can we do? Uh, let's play, uh, let's do a left hand stride for this one, my favorite. Now let's do a pinky bounce first. So we're gonna go E, A, D, minor, major, major, E, A, D. So let's do a pinky bounce. Let's do it with the right hand, pinky bounce. Maybe do them together. So that's D, E, A, D. Moving up to E flat, or not really D sharp, but E flat. So instantly we have F and B flat, major scale. And you're gonna go two, five, one. Oh, I didn't do anything fancy for the other ones. I'll, I'll continue to do that from now on. So uh, E flat is gonna be F minor, B flat major, E flat major, minor major major, F, B flat, E flat. They feel right, they go together as a pair. You can't possibly, possibly play the wrong chord. So when you're learning music, 
you're going to learn pieces and you're going to go, oh, there's 2, 5, 1 into E flat. Well, that's F and B, F, F and B flat instant, instantly. You'll just say it. It won't be a thought because they feel like they all go together. So let's play that one a bit more advanced. Let's play something like F minor. Well, it doesn't matter. You just ask later if you want to. That's a nicer way of playing 2, 5, 1. Uh, moving on to E, so instantly we have F sharp and B. They feel right. F sharp and B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, so we've got two, five, one. F sharp, B, E. They feel right. I feel like I'm in a different key. Even if some of these overlap with other keys, sometimes you might get a minor that's uh, or a major, which is like, for example, G is the major of itself, number one, but it's also the major of C, the five. But I see it in the key that it's in, so the overlapping doesn't affect anything because you know what one is. So E, we're in now, F sharp, uh, B, E. Uh, so F sharp minor, minor, B major, E major, minor, major, major. So how can we play this one? Uh, let's do a different time signature maybe. Let's play it in 3-4. Uh, so let's do something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this. But I'm feeling the one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. The F sharp minor. I put a little flick in there. Just to make it sound a bit nicer. So this time we might play something like, uh, make it a bit more advanced. Uh, put a nine in there, 13 perhaps. Now on B, I might play a 13 with a nine. Finishing on the E major. Seven with a nine on top. That's quite nice. Different ways, but it's always two, five, one. F sharp, B, E. They go together. They feel like they go together. You can't make a mistake. Onto F, we've got G and C. G minor, C major, F. You know the major scale of F. And you know it's going to be number two, G, C, five. Put them together. G, C, F. They feel Right, for me F is the most warm key for some reason. I enjoy playing G minor 7, or, you know, as it should be, but G minor and C to F. It just feels nice and comfortable to me. It feels like I'm sitting on a sofa. <laughs> so G minor, C major, F major, minor, major, major. So let's play this one a bit nicer. That was simply 2, 5, 1, a bit more fancy. Moving up to uh, F sharp, uh, that time I just noticed in F I didn't do any, uh, um, a particular exercise idea, but they'll come and go, I'm doing it randomly it seems, just going with the flow. F sharp, you know the major scale. Says. And uh, we're going to go 2, 5, 1, so G sharp, G sharp. Instantly there, it feels right, you can't confuse them, so G sharp minor, C sharp major, F sharp major. So what could we do with this one? Uh, earlier I did the pinky bounce. I did like this one. Well, it's a little finger bounce, but it's called a pinky bounce. I just play black notes in my left hand often with my ring finger. Uh, so let's do this one as a stride, for example. Let's do a bass note of G sharp coming up to the chord. So let's do it in... Uh, let's make this one weird and do it in 5-4. I never do that. Let's just count to 5. So that'd be something like... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That was counting to five. Let's, uh, what, what key are we in? F sharp, let's enhance that one in some way. Oh, what key are we in? F sharp, wait, sorry, I, I mixed keys. Uh, F sharp, so two, five, one, right. Another one. Moving on to G, going to get A and D into G. So A, D, G, two, five, one, two, five, one, A, D, G. They fit together, they feel right. Minor, major, major, minor, major, major. Major scale of G, of course. Two, minor, major, major. This time we might play uh, inversions. Let's play inversions. Let's do uh, left, it doesn't matter what hand. Let's say left hand inversions in A. So we're going to go, oh, I was playing a seven there, I shouldn't be playing a seven. What fingering do I want to use? In 
into D, uh, into uh, D, yes, we're into G, aren't we? D, D major, triad. And then to uh, G, of course. Do it with the right hand, do them together, get the idea. And a nicer way to play that might be to play, uh, again, I always put nines everywhere, but let's put an 11 in it as well. And I'm going to put a flat nine onto the uh, D. With a flat five as well. And then I'm going to finish on a major 13 with a nine. It's an interesting sound. On top with a major seven. So that was... Uh, An interesting thing but again it's just based on two five one moving up to a flat we get b flat and e flat minor major major and we know the major scale of course of uh, a flat so what can we do for this one uh how can we play uh we could why don't we introduce a bit of improvising in this one, perhaps, and just play the, the uh, major scale, because it works, of the key of one, which is A flat, so just the notes of A flat. You could just do that just going up, in a, in, just going up and down the major scale without mixing the notes up, but we could just play something like, something like that with the two minor. And then we go into E flat for the major, and then we can go maybe up in A flat. then of course it's going to work on the one as well. So that's quite a, a fun thing to do. So I'm just playing the major scale of A flat and of course it's, it's going to work with the two and the five uh, and the one. Moving on to A, we get B and E, which is very nice. B minor, E major, A major, B, E, A. They work together. B minor, E. Uh, a, that's sort of one playing minor. Minor, major, major. I didn't do anything fancy in the other one, but yeah, no, I did actually. So B minor, fan a bit more fancy. Might play something like this. It's quite a nice shape. What am I doing here? I've got the minor here, got the uh, five here, and the nine on top. Three, five, nine. It's nice. Gonna go something in E. I can already see that I'm playing nice notes in the key of E. I've got the, the nine here of E. This is the dominant 7 of E, this is the 13 of E, so I can just play a bass note here. Doesn't that sound nice? I'm playing a 13 in the way. I know it's very complicated, I'm just playing it for those of you, so you don't get bored if you, if you do know the basics. So let's play uh, maybe the 5 like this. And then on to A, we could go, we could um, play the major 7 inversion like this with a 9. So we've got the 5, major 7, root and 9 up here. So that's the way to play it there. And then I did that, I think. It's quite nice. Uh, moving up to B flat, almost done. Uh, aiming for 20 minutes, I was hoping. It's going, going quite well. B flat is going to give you uh, C and F, which is very nice. Minor, major, major. C minor, F major, B flat major. Let's do this one. Uh, how can we do this one? Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think of, I've got something in my mind, I don't know if it's going to... Yeah, you could do um, falling, descending, uh, this is an Elton John thing, in one of my Elton John videos I, I explain this. You can f descend in inversions, which is a kind of Elton John thing to do. So if we're going C uh, minor, you might start all the way up here, I'm playing C, E flat and G, and then just fall down in one or two inversions. So you might go C, E flat, G, but then invert it. You're still playing C minor to G, C, and E flat, and then just stick with those two inversions, for example. So I'm still playing C minor, which is two of B flat, and then you could go down on the F and do that inverted. Maybe start here, or start up here. I know you can't see, but I'm just playing F, A, C, the triad, and then come down to maybe the inversion of A, C, and F, C, F, and A, something like that. Just well, that time it changed. This time I went, this is, I went directly to the to the fifth one. So F, A, C, C, F, A, F, A, C, C, F, A, F, A, C. That's the five, and then just landing on the on the one, for example. Keep it simple. <laughs> 
or do the same thing. Descending, descending based on the fifth, the second inversion. So that, that might be quite a nice thing to do. Just by play, and just play the bass in the left hand. So one, well, one, two, three, I was gonna say. So the two, the five, the one, you might just go uh, on the minor. Like that time I went up again, why not? Then coming down on the F, inverted on the fifth, go up again. And I'll be flat, go down again. Be flat on the second inversion on the F. Just to force those inversion shapes, that's quite nice. Something to do there. Uh, moving up, oh, then playing it nicely perhaps. What key are we going into? I get confused. We're going to B flat, so it's just F something. So C minor something. That's something nice. C minor 9 again. Maybe put an 11 in there here. Uh, something like this. C, F, lifted up with a dominant 7 something, a flat 9, a 13. Very nice sound. Flat the 13 onto the major 7 with the 9. Put the sharp 11 on top. Nice. Something like that. Something like that. It's still 2, 5, 1. That's my point. You can make it all fancy, but it's still C, F, B flat. 2, 5, 1. They fit together, they feel right. C, F, B flat. The last one, B. So we're going to get C sharp, F sharp, B. Two, five, one. Let's look at the major scale. You know that. We're going to go two, C sharp minor, F sharp major, B major. Minor, major, major. C sharp, F sharp, B. Uh, well, how can we, what could we do with this one? Uh, let's try something like a walking bass. Uh, which is a bit more complicated, but you're still playing the notes of the chord. So you're just going to go, you're going to play the notes of the chord, C sharp minor, and then F sharp, and then B, but you're going to play it as a walking bass. So you're simply going to walk the notes of the triad. Just a bit with the left hand. That's quite nice. And maybe do that when you're just a bit more jazzy here, jabbing the chord. Let's try again. Again, why not? I like doing this. Semitone as a passing tone to the B. That's a bit of fun to do there. Uh, and then a bit more fancy, that might be something. How can we do this? Um, putting an, aug an augmented chord in that time. That just came out naturally. F sharp augmented. Augmented means raised to five. That was quite nice. You can put a nine with that because it goes everywhere. You can put the sharp nine if you want to. Get a clashy sound, but it works. And then onto the B major uh, seven. Nice safe sound, put the nine here maybe. Sharp the 11 if you want to. Many different things you can do. So I played I play the note, the E sharp there. Many different things. So we've gone through all the 12 keys chromatically. You know all the 12 major scales. We've done a 2 5 1, it's, it's minor, major, major, plus a little fancy way of playing them just to sort of prove that you can enhance them. And um, a few different ways that just randomly came to me on how to play them, which, you, which exists in real playing, real repertoire. Um, so that song I remembered that I wanted to share with you before the video, the video won't get too long. This song is A Foggy Day and uh, it basically goes like this. Basically like that. Now I want you to learn that song, if you, I mean, if you want to, I'd like you to learn it. But I'm going to just tell you it in numbers. So the first section is simply one, key of F, but it doesn't matter what the key is. It's just going one, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, one. That is it. It's, so it's literally doing the two, five, one, but it's preceded by the six, which is the most common. So if you think you know the two, five, ones, or when you have mastered them and you feel totally comfortable in any key, um, try to do it by adding the six which still comes from the major scale of whatever one is. So in the key of F, the six is D. And very basically, twice round, you're playing one, 
six, two, five, one. If you want to play that with the correct seventh, it will be six is a dominant seven. It's actually a major third. It shouldn't be based on modal theory, but it is in this case. So it's just one, six with an exception, two, five, one, six, basically, two, five, one. If you can get that sequence, that's great. Then it does a, I have a video on this, so don't be confused or afraid. It does a floating 251 into the fourth. Now that happens all the time. There's this constant movement of upper fourth, upper fourth, upper fourth in jazz, in pop, even in classical. There's moving upper fourth is very pleasing to our ears. So from F, it's going to go up to B flat, which is the fourth. There's nothing complicated in that, I hope you'll agree. But to get to that four, we take its own 251. And now you're a master of 251s, you know that the 251 of B flat is C and F. So you're going to play C minor with a dominant seven if you want to take it further, F major with a dominant seven, and B flat major seven. And then what also happens is that sometimes after you've just gone up a four via the floating 251, sometimes it just likes to just pop on another four, so B flat, upper four, three flat, just as a kind of branch, a little tag on the end. Sometimes happens. And then it works its way back to F via 36251. Now, three is the most common chord number, numerically speaking, that goes before the six, and because of the cycle of fourths. So if you look, three in the key of F, orientate yourself to the key of F. It's all about major scales. Everything comes from major scales. Three, six, two, five, one. So it's A, D, G, C, F. Three, six, two, five, one. But if you look at that in the cycle of fourths outside of a key, it's a cycle of fourths. A, D, G, C, F. But you want to not think in that way because that takes you outside of a major scale. That's just that's just a cycle of fourths. You can just start from C and just go round the cycle of fourths, you know, forever and ever and ever. So there's, there's no key. It's just an atonal kind of progression. But in the key of F or the key of anything, of course, three, six, two, five, one is the cycle of fourths. There's a bit of magic in there. But learn it within a key. So this song ends. Well, it does end. But I mean that section ends by getting yourself back to F via its 36251. If you just remember that as a group, you'll never forget it because it applies to every jazz song you'll ever want to learn. So that song is going 16251-6251. That's the section. You can't forget that. 16251-6251. Upper fourth, this is the second section of dissection. Upper fourth via a floating 251, totally common. 251. Upper fourth, because that happens often, a little tag on the end, nothing unusual, just master that as a, as a template. Now go all the way back to F via 36251. 36251. The melody comes last, don't worry about that. That's it, basically. And then there's a tiny, tiny difference for the end. If you listen to the song, you'll hear it, but it's still basically another common chord progression, which is one, two, three, four. And it follows the uh, the laws until the four, because that becomes minor, but that's common at the end. You could do a minor on the four. One, two, three, four. It's actually a six there, but that's a tiny exception to remember. And then um, three, six, two, five, one. If you write that down, you can go and play that song. D, G, C, one, six, two, five, one. Now the floating two five one from what says going one floating two five one into the four two four upper four now three six two five one key of F and then you repeat it that's that section and then the part near the end where it's going one two three four is just where it goes sorry hang on I did a, I did a major not a minor there three. Six, two, five, one, and that's how it ends. That is how you'll learn jazz songs in your mind. You'll dissect all of the piece and the chord progressions, and instead of learning how many chords? One, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, one, uh, floating two, five, one into the four, so that's ten, eleven, twelve, upper fourth, three, six, two, five, one. I mean, how many? That's eighteen chords before you even get to that end bit. 
So instead of remembering 18 chords individually out of key with no context, why not just remember 2 times 1, 6, 2, 5, 1, floating 2, 5, 1 into the 4, quick upper 4 tag, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1 back to the beginning. That's four things to remember instead of 18. That's significant because each of those parts are so common and exist in every jazz song you'll ever find that once you've mastered these templates, 2, 5, 1, 6, 2, 5, 1, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, moving up a 4, floating 2, 5, 1, which is still a 2, 5, 1, it's just into the 4. It can also happen into the 6, into the, it can happen anywhere. It's still a 2, 5, 1. You can learn songs that quickly. It's so easy. I know I shouldn't say it's so easy because, you know, maybe it is not easy for you yet. But would you rather learn 18 chords or four blocks of things which just appear in every song you'll ever learn? So just master those simple templates, 251, 6251, 36251, um, moving up a fourth. Sometimes it happens twice. 1, 2, 3, 4 is a common progression. Um, just 1, 2, 3 is a common progression. That happens in My Romance. Key of B flat, it goes 1, 2, 3. Uh, then it goes, uh, I can't remember the song, but it the point is it goes 1, 2, 3. And that's my point. I can't remember the next part, but it's 1, 2, 3, that's my point. Um, once you've got those down, the jazz repertoire becomes very accessible and very quick and easy to learn. And then the melody comes last. You can just work that out by ear because you, you know the piece so well on your internal jukebox already. Uh, so hopefully this video, this blitz on the 251s in all the major scales, in all the keys, has helped you. And uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, as always welcome. Have a look at my books, blog and podcast, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.